the things that you go through Seems nobody goes with you Your life's feeling kind of dry And you're just a crane bitch a high Praise the Lord and good morning. I'm sitting in for Pastor Bobby today. Please continue to pray for him, First Lady Grace, and the Oak City Church family. I also would ask you to keep praying for me and my family as well. Your prayers for our peace and comfort and strength uh, are really working, and I really do appreciate your prayers. And I think that in large part is because of those prayers that we can continue and to do what we're doing today. So uh, today we're going to continue in the book of Philippians chapter number two. Um, verses number 12 and 13. Last time we left off verse number 11. We'll read the entire passage again, but we're going to key in on the last two verses, chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Uh, while you turn to that, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, once again for this day. You're blessed to see. We thank you, Lord, for just being God and Lord of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for Calvary, for giving us a Savior. We have eternal life through his name. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together this day to share your word. We ask you, Lord, to teach us what you want us to know. Give us what you want us to have. And make us into the people of God you've called us to be to your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Philippians chapter 2. We're reading verses 5 through 13. The main verses for the day are verses 12 through 13. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, verses 12 and 13 is for our lesson text today. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. I highlight that in red. Those are the, one, those are the words I want to talk about today. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So Paul, writing to the church of Philippi, is telling them to work out their own salvation. But notice this verse starts with wherefore. So verse 12 says wherefore. Wherefore means therefore. So when we talk about therefore, and, we, and we've said this before, it's based upon something that just occurred, something we just said, based on what we just talked about. Now I could say this. So based upon what just occurred in these writings from Paul, he can now encourage them to work out their own salvation. So some way or another, salvation is tied directly to what he just talked about. And what did he just talk about? Let's go back to verse six and seven again. Who being in the form of God, this is Jesus Christ, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. What we have here right before this is none other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came and died on a cross, he was buried and he rose again. God raised him from the, from the grave on the third day. We have the gospel. So because of the gospel, Paul now says, work out your own salvation. Salvation, yes. You want to be saved. And this word salvation means to be rescued, to be delivered, to be brought to safety, free from what? Delivered from what? Safe from what? From sin. The penalty of sin, the punishment of sin, the guilt of sin, the, the dominion of sin, the presence of sin. Be totally delivered. That's salvation. That's being saved. And Paul says, work out your own salvation. Well, how do I work out my own salvation? Well, we just said God has given him a name which is above every name. Maybe that has something to do with it. So maybe it has something to do with the gospel we just talked about. Absolutely. So because of the gospel, Paul now says, work out your own salvation. So, OK, well, I got it. then. so it, it's tied to what Jesus Christ did at Calvary. Yes. And this is not the first time this happened. People heard about this. I mean, Paul is writing to church of Philippi. But remember, Peter preached in the book of Acts. Well, not preached, but he did. I guess I call it preaching. It wasn't supposed to be a sermon, but in the book of Acts, let's turn to that. Uh, let me get it real quick. Book of Acts, chapter number four. Remember when the, when they hear the um, the impotent man, and so they would ask him, "How why, you know why did you do this? How did you do this?" Um, Acts chapter four, verse number ten. Here's what Peter says: "Be it known to you all." And to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which is set in all of, of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Now, here's what he says in verse 12 here. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven giving among men whereby we must be saved. So Peter tells them then that to be saved or work out your own salvation has to be done by the name and through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes further to say there is no other name. There is no other way. It has to come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Work out, work out. Work, work sounds like work. But, but. But isn't salvation free? No, salvation is not free. It's free to you and free to me. But read verses 6, 7, and 8 that we just read. Who being in the form of God, thought of not robbing the people, we're going to go on to die on a cross. Does that sound like something free to you? No, that sounds like something horrific. The humiliation of Jesus Christ paid for our sins. So it may be free to us, but it's a he gave his life on Calvary's cross. Salvation is not free. Salvation is the most expensive thing in the world. And we don't have to pay for it because Christ paid for our sins at Calvary's cross. And so the writer says, work on your own salvation. Now, work, the word in the Greek means to do that from which something results, which means I got to do something. And whatever I do produces some result. So Paul says, work out your own salvation. So it sounds like to me that I have to do something to produce this result of salvation. But it's not like that. And the best example I can give is example of, uh, of what I did to increase my vitamin D. So every time I, every year I would go for my annual exam and I do all my labs ahead of time. My doctor would always tell me that, oh, everything's good, everything's good, but you have a vitamin D deficiency. And he would always give me a prescription for vitamin D. This has been true for like the last six, seven, eight years. I've never, I've never filled a prescription. I've never taken any extra vitamin D. I just go there every year, inspect to hear um, you have a vitamin D deficiency. But back in 2017, I went to the doctor and he said, whoa, your vitamin D is great now. What did you do? Now, if I had taken the prescription, filled it, paid for it, and then every week taking my regimen of 10,000 I use or whatever it was, then I would say, here's what I did. I did X, Y, and Z, and that's why my vitamin D is high. And But I said, I haven't done anything. I haven't taken any prescriptions. I haven't taken any vitamin D tablets. I haven't done anything, but my vitamin D is increased. And he said, well, what have you done differently in life? I said, I haven't done anything. Oh, I did move from Texas. I moved to Florida. 
And uh, he said, oh, maybe that's it, more sunshine. Maybe, 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 I, I guess, I don't know. But the only thing that I did was move to a place where there was more sunshine, more sunshiny days, and I was outside more days. So that produced the results? Yes, that's what he said. Well, keep doing that. So all I did was go out in the sunshine that God provided. Did I make the sunshine? No. Did I make the sun? No. Did I cause it to shine on me? No. I just went outside. Wow. So that produced a result. But what was the work? It wasn't my work. But look at the next verse, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you. Oh, so whatever I'm doing, I'm not really working at all. But it's God's doing it in me. I didn't make up my mind to be saved. God drew me to him and God drawing you to him. So the work out your own salvation, let's not get it confused. It's not about work on our part. It's all the work that God has already done and the work that he's done, he's done through his son on Calvary's cross for your sins and for my sins. And then it says, work out your own. I mean, when someone says work out yours, that's one thing, but work out your own, that makes it very personal. So today we need to take our salvation and think about it personally. Now, Paul, for some reason, thought to tell the church to work out their own salvation. Now, why would that be? Because isn't the church already saved? The church has already accepted Jesus Christ. So why would he tell them to work out their own salvation? Maybe salvation means something else in this context, or maybe not. But this letter is being read to the church. Now, think about this. What if this letter was read, being read to your church? Would you assume, well, everyone here at the church is already saved. Why would we be talking about the gospel message? Everyone here already accepted Christ as Savior. Why are we talking about, you know, Calvary? Everybody? Every last person? That's it. Someone, just because you're in church, doesn't mean you're saved. And sometimes we lose sight of that because we have a title of reverend or minister or deacon or whatever. And we think that title means something. But, you know, you know, <laughs> You know who the son of perdition is? The one who betrayed Jesus Christ, who has an eternal destruction right now. You know, he had a title too. Bigger than my title and bigger than your title, he has the title of an apostle. Well, that apostle couldn't hide behind that title. I can't hide behind my title. You can't hide behind yours. Work out your own salvation. It means yours personally. We all know you're saved. We all believe you're saved. We believe each other's saved. But those who we believe are saved, they're not saved, work out your own salvation. Paul says with fear and trembling, take this thing seriously. You can't hide with the numbers in the church. You can't hide with the number of the people you're with. Work out your own salvation. Paul is talking to the church. And he says, your own. That's personal. That's yours. That's mine. And he's saying this after he's represented the gospel message, after he's represented all what Christ has done at Calvary for us. He paid a huge price. He paid our ransom. Now work on your own, work out your own salvation. Well, what does that mean? That means accepting Christ as our Savior, being serious about being believing, believing from your heart. You know for a fact what happened at Calvary. And that's what we talk about. That's what we celebrate now. And I don't really talk about uh, doing. I'm doing some things for the Lord. I'm going to go get busy. Okay, yeah, that's good. But what about inside? Has my heart got busy for the things of God? Have my heart got busy for, for, for pursuing lost souls? Has, have my heart got busy? Well, I just want you to stay active. Paul says, work out your own salvation. And I can't go much further than this today but it's just time for each one of us to get down to what's real and what's not real and understand that the gospel is what's real and everything that we added to that gospel in order to be saved to have a right standing in our church or a right standing with god as we think is the unreal category it's the gospel period is faith in what christ did at calvary we got to get back to the gospel message once again get back to the cross once again keep preaching and keep teaching that jesus christ our savior died on the cross for our sins he was buried and he rose again you know i think about when my kids were small and um we we're at the kitchen table having bible study and 
we were going over what's really important. We were talking about the gospel. And I remember we talked about a lot of things, but I remember going back to, okay, let's let's just redo the gospel, make sure we got the gospel down. This this is what's important, the gospel. And I said, let's go through what is the gospel again? And, and the two older boys, one of them said, Jesus Christ died on the cross. Okay, that's part of it. Uh, he died on the cross for our sins. Yeah, that's part of it too. And what else? And he was buried. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Jesus Christ died on the cross. And what else? They said, oh, for the whole sins of the whole world. Okay, yeah, that's true too. What else? Uh, uh, he, he, uh, he, 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 he suffered and died. Oh, that's all that's part of it too. And so while DJ and Michael were still talking about, oh, he, yes, he died, he was buried, he, he died for our sins. Then I was still saying there's still something missing, still something missing, still something missing. And, and David, who was in the first grade at this time, said, And he arose, daddy, he arose. I said, That's it, that's it, that's it, he arose. And so it was important to get the whole gospel message down. That was it. And so it does, it's no surprise that, that in, in David's last days, we revisit the gospel once again. And, and you know, they told me he had cancer. And so when I came, I said, are you scared? Man, you're supposed to be scared when you hear the C word. He said, no, I'm not scared. So I know you're never scared. But And, and then, I, then I said, do you know why you're saved? And that's where this conversation started. Again, the same conversation we had at the kitchen table when he was six years old about the gospel and why would you say? And he didn't say because, remember I used to clean the kitchen up uh, on, on third Sundays. Or remember I used to pass up the Sunday school lessons for you. None of that. That's not why you say it all went back to what Christ did at Calvary. And that's what we have to get baked down, work out our own salvation based upon what Christ did in Calvary. But based upon what Paul outlines in Philippians chapter 2, now work out your own salvation. And that's what we got to get to the world. I, I met a guy and um, he was moving to a house. And I always like to look for an opportunity, like many of you, to share the gospel. But it's so hard sometimes because you got, can't just fabricate one. But this man gave me a softball. He said, yeah, I'm moving here, moving in, and uh, this may be my last house I'm moving in. Okay, that's the lead end. He said, after this would be foot, feet first, something like that. I said, okay, like dying, yeah, yeah. I said, then what home will you be in? He said, I don't know. I just hope my good outweigh my bad. There you go. He gave me my door. I said, you good outweigh your bad? I said, oh, man, if that worked for me, I would have way too much bad than good. I can't think of enough good. But the good thing is, Good outweighing the bad doesn't really do it. I said, it was all based on what Christ did at Calvary. He said, what? He said, you don't believe in the yin-yang? I said, no, 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 no. He says, you're going to do some good things. And, and we had a chance to I had a chance to share the gospel with him. And he just teed up me for, for, so nicely. I said, look, your home after this home is based upon one thing. And that's whether or not you accept or reject it. But Christ did at Calvary for your sins. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried in Moses. And if you believe it from your heart, you can be saved for sure. And it was great. And so Paul here encouraging the church to work on your own salvation, work out your own salvation, do something to produce your growth. You're not going to work and do physical exhortation, but it's to, just like I said about walking out in the sunlight, is to accept what Christ did at Calvary in your heart and promote that message to everyone else because this is what's important, the gospel message. A lot of things we talk about are not important. We got to get back to basics, get back to the cross, because when it comes down to death, staring at his face, we don't want to talk about how many times we painted the parking lot. And God's not going to ask you how many times you cleaned the church bathrooms. But he will ask you, what did you do with my son that paid for all your sins at Calvary's cross? Did you accept or reject him? And all of us, are going to have to answer that question. All of us are going to have to stand before God. All of us are going to have to have to give an account of what we did with the cross. And if there's an eternal damnation for you, no one can step in and, and, and take your place. Because that's already had taken place already at Calvary. Jesus Christ died once for sin. He's not going to step in again and die for your sins again because you rejected the first time. He's done it already. And so now it's up to all of us to make sure that we, you, me, our families, our friends, people we meet, 
understand the gospel message. Tell them to work out your own salvation. It's not a lot of work. Just accepting what Christ did at Calvary's cross for our sins. And be we who are already saved, work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. Put the gospel back center in your lives. And so until next time, we, we might talk about this again. Uh, I haven't covered the, 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 both of these verses. I haven't treated them both, but I did want to just talk about those uh, worries that jumped out to me today, and that is work out your own set, work out your own salvation, your own salvation. So until next time, may God richly bless you all. Jesus. The things that you go through seems nobody goes with you. Your life's feeling kind of dry, and you're just a crane, get your high.